today I'll be ranking the top 10 best bloodlines for grinding in Shinobi Life 2. If you enjoy this video make sure to like and subscribe. First let's start with some honorable mentions. Bubbles, Magma, and Lava are all good options for boss grinding. But they are only good for people with extra bloodline slots. They have good damage output, but aren't worth one of your bloodline slots. So they will be in my honorable mentions. Now let's begin the top 10. At number 10 I have Light Jokery. Its mode has some high damage output, and you have iframes on the C spec. The M1s do lots of damage, and the third move is very good when combined with tick damage moves like Acid and Bubbles. Light Jokery is also good in PvP, so it's a bloodline with lots of value, if you are thinking of buying it from the Rel coin shop. At number 9 I have Jitsuga. Jitsuga's main edge on Light Jokery is its mode. The Tail Beast M1s are really good at dodging attacks from bosses, and the mode itself does lots of damage. The moves can also be equipped to your elemental slots, and the first move stuns for a really long time. Similarly to Light Jokery, Jitsuga is really good in PvP as well. At number 8 is Ashura Shizen. Ashura Shizen has two stun moves that deal lots of damage, and a mode that is similar to Jitsuga. The main difference is that Ashura Shizen has a counter. The counter stuns the boss, making it really easy to start a combo. You also won't be taking unnecessary damage, and will grind bosses faster with bosses not starting combos off you. The second move of Ashura Shizen also gives you back Kai, making it useful in high Kai combos, like the previous bloodlines. Ashura Shizen is also a good bloodline to use in PvP, and it can be bought in the Rel coin shop. At number 7 is Baruma Ki Gaiden. Baruma Ki Gaiden is not only good in PvP, but also in PvE. Its move set and mode both have counters, making bosses almost never damage you. Every move also does lots of damage, and you can do combos with bloodlines, like Crystal, to do lots of damage to bosses. On top of this, Baruma Ki Gaiden also can be equipped in your elemental slots, making it very useful when using other bloodlines. The only downside to Baruma Ki Gaiden is that the M1s have knockback. But when you're dealing so much damage, it's not too big of an issue. The sixth best bloodline is going to be Tetsuo Kajin. Every move on Tetsuo Kajin have really good synergy, and you can do lots of combos with the first move. Its mode has a counter, making it really good at continuous combos, and the second move, C spec, and E spec are all high damage moves that are really good at shredding bosses. If you are going to use this bloodline for grinding, I recommend using another bloodline like Bubbles or Magma, and using Acid as your element. These moves combined with the first move of Tetsuo Kajin will do lots of damage to the boss. Tetsuo Kajin can also be bought in the Rel coin shop for 270,000 Rel coins, but when featured it only costs 170,000. If you want this bloodline, I recommend just trying to spin it, because you can get way more value with your L coins buying other things. At 5th place, I have Tengoku. It has some insane damage output, and when you push a boss against a wall, it's really easy to shred the boss's HP. The only downside to this bloodline is the knockback. But if you have stuns, or push the boss into a wall, you will be fine using this bloodline. The first and second move has knockback, but do lots of damage. And the third move stuns for a pretty long time, while dealing lots of damage. The mode has M1s with slight knockback, but they will still do insane damage. The C spec, Q spec, and E spec all do ludicrous amounts of damage too. The only downside to Tengoku is how hard it is to get, and it not being too good in PvP. At 4th I have Shindai Akuma. If you are a new player, this will be the bloodline you'll buy from the Rel coin shop, as it only cost 150,000 Rel coins. It's really easy to level up, and the clones do so much damage. Combined with a companion and stuns, this bloodline will easily destroy bosses. Shindai Akuma also has lots of iframe moves, making it pretty hard for the boss to deal damage to you. The first move is a counter, the Q spec is an iframe block breaker, and the C spec has slight iframes too. The second move also does over 100,000 damage modded, but it has a pretty small hitbox, so you'll probably have to stun the boss before using the move. If you don't have any of the bloodlines above Shindai Akuma, this bloodline is a really good cheap alternative. It's one of the only bloodlines on this list that will be good against bosses and tailed beasts, so it has lots of value. 
At number 3 I have Snake Man. Snake Man's damage output is insane. The first move is a click TP, the second move is really good at staggering bosses, and the third move block breaks and does extra damage. But these aren't the main reason Snake Man is ranked so high. Snake Man's mode is unbelievable. The C spec stuns, while being one of the highest damaging specs in the game. The Q spec is a counter that deals lots of damage too. And the E spec is there for some extra chip damage and combo extending. But that's not all. Snake Man's M1s also do lots of damage. Everything about this bloodline is just high damage. And if you have this bloodline, I highly recommend using it. At number 2 I have Code Gaiden. Honestly, Code Gaiden and Snake Man are a toss up for 2 and 3. But I think Code Gaiden might have a slight edge. Mainly because of Code's first move. The first move of Code summons lots of clones that deal insane amounts of damage. When you combine this with Code Gaiden's second or third move, which both place lock stun, the boss's HP goes down so fast. Code Gaiden's mode is also really good too. The C spec spawns lots of traps that stun the boss, and the Q spec is a counter that summons even more clones. And lastly Code has an E spec that teleports the boss to you, and does a combo on them. Code's M1s also aren't too bad as well. But, this bloodline will perform the best with other abilities that support its strengths. For example, using Crystal in the third move can do insane amounts of damage to the boss. Anything that will stun the boss or have tick damage is going to be your best bet when trying to find something to synergize with this bloodline. The only real downside for Code Gaiden is that it's really hard to get. It has a 1 out of 400 chance of spinning and cost 285,000 rel coins in the rel coin shop. Coming in at number 1 is Iceton. Iceton can be one of the easiest or hardest bloodlines to get in Shinobi Life 2. It all depends on your luck and what your moveset for fighting all the tail beasts are, but the grind for it is worth it. Iceton has the highest damaging C spec in the game. Even after it was recently nerfed, it still does nearly 200,000 damage, and combined with the fact that it has its stun, it's just too good to not have. But that's not the only thing. Iceton's first move pulls the boss towards you, the second move is an AoE hit stun, similar to the C spec, and the third move is a place lock stun. Combined with Iceton's mode which has a place lock, combo extender Q spec, an E spec that staggers the boss, and M1s that do almost 90,000 damage, Iceton will most likely be the best boss grinding bloodline for a while. Anyways, that's it for the video. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe, and let me know if you want more of this type of content. Bye.